All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this battery and it's from a company called a I think that's how you say it, but I'm not hundred percent sure. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery and it is 100 amp hours of capacity at 12 volts, which is pretty cool. It comes with some car cautions on the battery around the operating temperature. Uh, do not charge these regularly. If you're not using them, don't short circuit the external contacts or do not disassemble, crush, puncture, or incinerate the battery. Over here, some more information about the battery, the size in uh, amps and, and, and watts, and then a link to the website at cuckoobatteries.com. It's a deep cycle battery that's made in China, and there are some certification marks down here. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at Akuku and they asked if I would do a review of this battery. I love playing around with batteries, so of course I said yes. If you're the type of person who doesn't like that and gets triggered easily, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, now we're back and I want to talk a little bit about the battery and its construction. You can see some screws over here that hold the top of the battery on. And the case is made out of some sort of metal. It's not plastic. And then all of these graphics and information are actually painted on the battery, which is pretty cool. Uh, on the side, let me see if I can get this over here in the camera so you can see it. It has these metal handles and they tilt up, not down, but these metal handles are screwed in or bolted into the side of the battery. Let's see if I can tilt this up so you can see them. And uh, it actually makes this battery extremely, it's heavy, um, easy to maneuver or carry around. It's a lot better than the strap. I actually really like this and would like to see that on more batteries if possible. Let's take a quick look at the top of the battery. So here are the battery terminals and they come with these rotatable battery uh, covers. And what they do is, is that once you have your terminals connected to something, you can put these case covers on here, and what they do is they protect against anything falling against the battery or short-circuited. Here we have your standard 8 millimeter bolts or terminal lugs, as some folks call them. And they come with a standard washer and a lock washer, and uh, not much more to say about that other than their, than their terminal covers. Let me go ahead and pop this one off as well. And these come off pretty easy. And then they clip on pretty easily. So it's not a hassle and it's actually a pretty nice feature. I like that. One of the things I will notice is that both the battery terminals are on the end of the battery. A lot of times with batteries like this, you see the terminals here and here. Uh, to charge this up, I used a NOCO Genius 10 amp charger. I'll roll a picture of that in now so you can see how I charge it up. And then also I'm going to roll in a picture right now that shows that the battery came packed in a large box with plenty of foam materials. It also comes with an instruction manual, and we're going to take a look at that. Okay, so what we have here is our battery, and then we have some 10-gauge copper wire that is connected to our terminals here. Let me slide this over just a little bit, and we'll get everything set up. To test the capacity of the battery, we're going to use this computer battery analyzer from West Mountain Radio. We're going to walk through the setup so you can see exactly how we do the test, but what I want to do is I want to connect this using these power pole terminals. There we go. Nice and easy, right? Let me slide this over just a little bit more. And then what we do is we take our computer battery analyzer and then we connect that to our computer with this USB cable. And you probably just heard it bong. Let's go over to the software, configure the test and get it started. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off. We're gonna highlight discharge because we're doing a discharge test. And then I want to change our battery supply over here to lithium iron phosphate four. Then I'm going to hit detect and the battery just came off the charger. So you can see our voltage is at 14.6. The capacity is, uh, says here that it is at one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change that to 100. And let's do a detect on the cells and it's detecting five cells. All right, what we're going to do now is we are going to come over here and uh, take a look at our cutoff voltage, which is currently set for 12.5. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that to 10.5. And that's when the test will stop unless the battery is fully discharged first. And then for test amps, we are going to do 10 amps an hour. And this should take about 10 hours to run this test. So it takes a while. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit start and then our test will begin. 
Okay, we got a pop-up and it says you've selected a target voltage that is less than the minimum recommended discharge for the battery. We always run these tests at 10 amps an hour, so we are going to use the targeted voltage anyway. And there we go, the test has begun. I will come back once it's finished and we'll see how the battery does. All right, folks, and the test is done. Taking a look at the live data square up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see the voltage of the battery right now is 11.71 volts, and that's because there's no load applied. But our test did stop at 10.5 volts just over 10 hours. So the test ran for 601.07 minutes. So it's 1.07 minutes over 10 hours, which is about what we expected. One of the things I would say is at around 62 amps, we started to see the voltage drop a little bit. Here you can see we're at 12.65. After that, it dropped down to 12.571 and then continued to go down. And we made it to 12 volts right around uh, 94.73 amps, which I think is fine in this case. Our total amount of amps drawn was 100.174. We got 1,261.78 watt hours. And we would call that a pass. All right, let's hook this thing up to the inverter and put a load on it and see how it performs. Okay, I did want to take a couple of seconds to look specifically at the product listing for this battery. Here we are at the Yakuku website. And you can see that these are uh, priced a little bit higher than the other batteries that are on the market, $549. Uh, when we scroll down, I wanted to take a quick look at this. And this battery has a Bluetooth connection inside, and it comes with an application that you can install to check your battery. We'll take a look at that. Uh, when you come down here, it calls it a lightweight champion. It weighs in at $29.98, and that is about the average for a 100 amp hour battery. Here are the dimensions. Uh, it's 12 and 12.85 uh, inches wide. It is, well, they're saying that's long, and then width is uh, 6.75 inches, and then the height is 8.45. So it's built tough, powerful, lightweight, and long lasting. Here are some examples of how you can connect that up to a solar system. Talks a little bit about uh, professional services and application scenarios, different things that it will power, some comparison to a uh, sealed lead acid battery. I think that everybody's generally accepted lithium iron phosphate is the way to go for these types of batteries and some stuff around shipping time. Here are some of the specifications and details. I think we covered the size of the battery, 100 amp hours, 12.8 volts. Your max continuous charge current is listed at 50 amps, or that would be 0.5C. Uh, energy is 1,280 watts. Uh, talks a little bit about the screws and some other things. I'll leave a link here. One of the things I did not notice about this battery was that it does not have uh, low temperature cutoff protection. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you may want to look elsewhere or look for an alternative way to do that. Here's the instruction manual. When you take a look at it, it is a no frills instruction manual. When you open it up, you have a table of contents and then it goes into the specifications. I believe we've covered all those specifications, so I'm not gonna go through it again. Uh, when you take a look at here, here are some PCM parameters. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I think that's protection circuit module. And it talks about overcharge, over discharge, uh, temperature protection, and it has some ratings here. But I don't know, let me hold this up a little bit so you can see a little better. I don't know if these um, are enforced by any kind of circuitry or technology. Then it spends the next couple of pages talking about how the battery is constructed and tested. Like here's the electronic chemical properties test. Here are test conditions and instruments that it was used. Um, that's very handy stuff. Um, some stuff about operating the Bluetooth module. And this would be product specification and pin designation. I don't know what that is because I didn't see any pin designation, any pins or plug outs on the battery. Storage, tram transportation, troubleshooting, and hindering precautions. Um, so it's what you would expect in a manual. Okay, the application that we use to monitor our battery is called Smart BMS. And I want to go into local. And here I can see my battery device down here. I have it hooked up to my inverter on the other side of the room. And then here you can see that it is showing a 99.1% charge. Here is our volts. Uh, there's no current coming out. And then you can see down here, let me hold it up. 
you can see some information and I would imagine that these things are graphical if you uh, use it at some level. We'll come back and we'll use this while a discharge test, test is going on so you can see the application a little bit better. But let's go over and take a look at the, uh, at the test setup right now. Okay, we have our test configuration set up here. We have the battery connected via these rather large cables to our pure sine wave power inverter. We have a clamp meter on the positive so we can measure the amperage out. And we're using a cumin watt meter to measure the output wattage of the sine wave inverter. Then we have the EEV blog digital multimeter and we'll be using that so we can test or monitor the battery's voltage. What I want to do now is I want to go grab my heat gun, and we have that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that into the Kumin watt meter. And this is one of everybody's favorite ways to test the battery. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on high. And when I do that, you can see that I'm already pulling over a hundred of amps from the battery. You can see some voltage sag on the battery as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to its low setting. And now we're pulling around 60 amps, give or take, from the battery. All right, what I want to do now is I want to go get the space heater and we're going to set that up and test. Okay, so we do have the, uh, the battery running right now on an inverter and you can see my state of charge is uh, still close to 100 and here under amps you can see that it's drawing 77.2 amps, remaining capacity is 96 amp hours. And then here is the battery voltage, it's saying it is 12.8. Down here, these are live meters that tell you what's going on. Um, this is the average voltage uh, draw, I would assume. I'm, I'm not 100% sure there. Um, you can see that it has two cycles, and at this point, I have charged and discharged it twice. And uh, these are just running, but none of these are graphs that I can take a look at. Um, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, and then down here you can see the state of the four different batteries. They're all a little bit different, but pretty close. Um, it's handy if you want to be able to check the quick health of your battery, something like that. Okay, so what we're doing now is getting a small space heater. Please bear with me. I know that it's difficult for the attention span bros. Here it is, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the uh, heat gun over to plug directly into the inverter, and then I'm going to plug the space heater into the Kumin watt meter. And this is just to do another type of test and a different type of load. Go ahead and plug that in and check everything, make sure that we're good to go. Now I turn the space heater on and I set the temperature for 77 degrees. It's currently 65 degrees in the basement, so this should do a nice little load. And we're starting to climb up. We are a little over 400 watts. If you look at the clamp meter, you can see that we're pulling 50, 60 amps, give or take, uh, from the battery. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the heat gun on low. After turning the heat gun on low, we're now pulling close to 150 amps from the battery. Now, I think this is fine for short bursts, but I'm the type of person that doesn't like to run any equipment or gear, regardless of what it is, uh, beyond maximum capacity for any duration. I don't even like running stuff at maximum capacity. I just feel that it puts an unnecessary wear and tear on your system. All right, and that's going to wrap up this video. I did want to say thanks to Akuku for sending this battery to me for my consideration. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.